Okay, so today I'm going to get you set up running Scum VM. So this one recently got a new update and I've never covered Scum VM before. So in this setup guide, I'm going to show you where to download Scum VM, how to add games to it, how to look at video settings, how to use your controller and pretty much everything else. So before you know it, you're going to be playing some classic DOS adventure games. So check this one out. <laughs> So before I start today's Scum VM or Script Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion Virtual Machine Setup Guide, hit notifications if you like the video today. It really helps my channel out a great deal and it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it, which is between one and three times a day. So yes, we're looking at Scum VM today and this of course released in the early 2000s, 2001 to be precise. And as recent as the 30th of December 2023, 44 days ago, we had an update for this. So Scum VM, which is of course known as Script Creation Utility for Maniac Mansion Virtual Machine, is constantly getting updates and it's not stopped since 2001. So I've covered uh, Scum VM for Retrobat, the front end emulation system. And people have been asking me over time to actually do a standalone setup guides for this. And it's actually surprisingly quite simple to use. So what we're going to do is go over to the Scum VM website and from here we can download either a portable version or an installer version. So just go to downloads and the current version of this as recorded in this video today is 2.8.0 which like I said released just a few weeks ago. If we just scroll down we're going to find Windows installer for both 32-bit and 64-bit. And we also got portable versions of Scum VM, which is 64 and 32-bit. Now, we're going into the bit territory just here. So if you're a bit confused and you're thinking a bit is something to do with the 8-bit and a 16-bit console, it's very different. So we need to establish what type of computer you're running. What I'm going to do is go to system information in my search bar. Just type this in. And under system information, you'll find the type of computer you've got. So I've got a 64-bit base PC. If you've got a 32-bit, then it will likely say times 64 base PC. So I'm going to download the portable version of this, which is going to be the 64-bit. If I just download this, and whilst it's downloading, we can actually use this website to download some freeware games. And under freeware section, we've got classics such as Beneath a Steel Sky, uh, Broken Swords, Dreamweb, and other classics, which were pretty much adventure games for uh, DOS computers and Amiga computers, that type of thing. And we've also got a demo section. So for your more known games, such as your LucasArts games, that type of thing, uh, most of this is going to be available to download through this section. And what we're going to do then, is take a look at that download that we've just got. So I've downloaded a portable version and it's come downloaded in a compressed zip folder. I'm going to just extract what's inside. So Scum VM 2.8.0, just drag this onto the desktop. And once that's out and it's extracted, we're going to now delete the zip folder. We no longer need that. And if we take a look in Scum VM, we've got lots of files in here. What I recommend doing is making a dash shortcut. So rather than going inside of the folder all the time, if I right click on it, show more options, send to, desktop create shortcut. I've then got the shortcut up here on my desktop. So it's a lot easier to access rather than going through that every time. Next thing I'm going to say is create yourself a games folder. And after you've got some games for Scum VM, I've got Indiana Jones, Fate of Atlantis, and I've got Beneath a Steel Sky CD. Now, when you're downloading games for Scum VM, you'll find that you'll either have a floppy disk version or a CD compact disk version. Uh, the difference is that obviously CD contains more data. Uh, CDs from memory were 512 megabyte in size. Whereas floppy disks were much smaller in uh, what they could hold. So obviously we're going to have enhancements with the CD versions of particular games. So if we take a look in Fate of Atlantis, here's the game files. And for Beneath a Steel Sky CD, we've just got a few in here. 
What I'm going to suggest doing is just dragging the games folder containing your games in individual folders into the scum VM folder. So what we're going to do next is open up scum VM through the shortcut for the first time. And if you're using Windows 11 like myself, you'll be very familiar with this really irritating Windows protected your PC malarkey. Go to more info and run it anyway. It's a very trusted system we downloaded. Okay, so this is Scum VM GUI or graphical user interface. So it's pretty plain, but it's pretty much straight to the point as well. First of all, if we go to global options, we can go to GUI and we've got the ability here to download icons for our games. If I left click, so I'm going to download packs and as we can see this is 310.8 megabyte so that's going to be icon packs for every game. So just go to downloads and this shouldn't take too long. In my case download speed is going at just under 18 megabytes per second. Good old fiber optic. Okay, so what we're going to do next is press close and we've got other options under global settings and if I go to the miss tab We can actually change auto save for our game. So rather than every five minutes That will auto save points of the game We can choose every 10 minutes every 15 and so on just leave this to every five minutes So what we're going to do next then is just apply our settings which we've done and go to ok So next thing we need to take a look at is adding a game what we're going to do then is go to the add game tab and you need to point this in the direction of where your games are now of course my games are on my desktop and they're in my scum vm folder so i'm going to go to desktop and here's my scum vm folder and my games folder and i've got indiana jones here fate of atlantis and i've also got beneath a steel sky so i'm going to select fate of atlantis choose and right there Instantly, in fact, we've now got the ID of the game, which was Atlantis. We've got the name of the game, and we've also got the platform for what this game is for. So it's obviously DOS. Now, from enhancements just here, we can choose audiovisual improvements, restored content, and modern user interface adjustments. If you want the original look of how this set out to look in the early 90s when it released, then don't check any of these. If you want to make your game look a little bit more modern and a bit more cleaner, then choose these options, just select them. Now next up, I'm gonna select audio. And the reason for this is that if we leave it to music devices, fluid synth, I get no sound and the game doesn't boot. If I go to override global audio settings and drop this down, I'm gonna just go at one to Microsoft GS Wave Table Synth. Select this and now the game should run perfectly. And we've also got key maps and just here it's going to tell us what particular keys do. Now let me just remind you that I'm using a Google Stadia controller and I've not had to configure this. It runs perfectly so much so I'm using it right now and by using my left analog stick I'm then moving the cursor around and I can actually use my A button to select. So here's our artwork or rather the icon thumbnail which I've downloaded using the global options. So what we're going to do is actually open up the game. But before that, if we go down to COG at the bottom, which is settings, we can change different modes in here for how the game appears. For example, if I go to graphics, I can then download shaders and I can go over the shader and apply a range of different shaders there, such as anti-aliasing and other things such as scan lines and TV effects. So there's a lot there to choose from, but if you've got time, take a look through them. Your game might look really retro or it might look really enhanced. Something like Anti-Allies and Advanced would be great. Let's say in fact try this one. So we're going to go to Choose. Now we've got the option to override global graphics settings. If we uncheck this, everything's left to default. If we check it, we can go to Graphics Mode and select SDL Service or OpenGL, that's your preference. I'm going to leave it to default. We've also got render modes. Now, either EGA or VGA, they're gonna provide different rendering resolutions. VGA is really good, or I think it is, so I'm gonna select this one. We also got stretch mode. So obviously games of this era were designed for four by three aspect ratio. So we're gonna to go to fit to window four by three, or we can use stretch to window. If we use stretch to window, the games might look a little bit too stretched 
but we're going to try that in a minute. For now, I'm going to use fit to window 4x3. We also got aspect ratio correction. So to guarantee us that it's going to be using that 4x3 aspect ratio, just select this one. We can also select full screen mode. And I'm going to uncheck full screen mode, but if you want full screen mode for your game, then check this. Under game 3D render, we can choose a render just here. Default works fine for me. And we also got anti-aliasing. If we drop this down, if you're running a lower end computer, these games aren't too demanding on your hardware at all. So by all means, go to 16 times. If your game lags, then obviously drop it down to something like two or four times. Okay, so we're gonna go down to okay. And to run the game, left click on it and press play. Okay, so something to mention, whilst we're in game on Scum VM, we can actually go into menu just here. So I'll press the start button on my Google Stadia controller, or you can actually access this menu by simultaneously pressing control in F5. From here, we can go to options and key maps, and we can find out which button does what for each game. And if we OK, we can then go to help. And some games are going to give us further support. So for example, if I press Alt in Enter together, we can toggle in and out of full screen and window mode. And we can also use spacebar to pause game. And there we go. By pressing spacebar, game is now paused. Whilst you're in game, if you don't want to read all the text, which I'm not sure why you won't want to do, after all, this is what these games are for, we can actually press escape, which bypasses most of this. Okay, so talking about loading saving now, so some games will let you save states and load states, some won't. This particular game won't. If I go to save, this game cannot be saved at this time. Please try again later. If you recall just a minute ago, we're going through the options through global settings and we set it to auto save every five minutes. So to exit the game, we can return to launcher. And I'm now gonna go to add my other game so obviously we need to point it into the direction of the other games we got. So Scum VM games and the other game I got is my Beneath a Still Sky. Remember, just left click on it once. You don't need to go inside. Just left click on it once and go to choose. And again, just like Indie, we have now got the name of the game in full. And this is a CD version for DOS. Uh, language is set to default. By all means, change it to a different language if you get the option to. So English, Great Britain for me. And just leave everything as it is. Now also remember to go to audio if you're having issues booting up your game and choosing override global audio settings and make sure Microsoft GS is selected. What I'm gonna do is boot up this game with Fluid Synth selected. If I go to OK and select my Beneath the Still Sky game, so this is what I mean by the audio set in a fluid synth. If we press OK on this, you're going to get this little console come up, almost like a terminal. Let's get out of this. What we're going to do is type exit. And that's it. So let's check out Beneath the Still Sky. I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to go to graphics. This time, 
I'm going to make things look a little bit different. For starters, I'm going to go down to stretch mode, stretch to window, scalar, I'm going to select TV. I'm also going to check filter graphics, game 3D render, I'm going to leave this as default, 3D anti-aliasing 16 times, and shader, I'm going to apply something a bit different. So I'm going to use a CRT shader here. So let's choose something appropriate to get us really old school look. Let's try this CRT VGA and choose. And just remember, overrides global audio settings and select Microsoft GS. And OK. And play. So as you can see, we now got a CRT look. And if we open up the menu here, you'll notice that this game doesn't have another option. Like I said, some games through Scum VM has more options than others, but nevertheless, if we go to options, key maps, you also find what works with each button. And some of these adventure games, it is worth knowing what your keys do. The old man was trying to tell the future, looking for pictures in the campfire. Oh, I see evil, evil, born deep beneath the city. Far from the light of day, I see it growing safe beneath a sky of steam. Scheming in the dark, gathering strength. And now, oh, now the evil spreads. It sends deadly feelers over the land above. Across the gap, reaching towards this very place. I'd seen him do it a hundred times, but I humored him. After all, he'd been like a father to me. And what does this evil want here? Oh, my son, I fear, I fear the evil wants you. That was when Joe... Those stairs don't look safe to me. And on some games, we can actually use F5 button like I'm using just here. And this is going to bring us into the menu for this particular game. So as we see, I've adjusted the sound volume. And that's it for today's Scum VM setup guide. So a fairly simple emulator to use. Uh, but I thought I'd do a setup guide after all. I cover every emulator on the planet on my channel where I try to. And I don't really do many standalone setup guides anymore. I mainly focus on front end. So I'm trying to change that habit. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like. So you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. And just to remind you, I've actually got merch available now, which is in my shop. You should see it just below this video. But anyways, until next time, stay retro.